The reason we set up the foundation was because there was a clear need between what the great science is out there and the great scientists and actually then developing that into, into something that is commercially ready. In simple terms, the foundation is community open to everybody. And it doesn't matter whether you're a startup or whether you're part of a major educational institute. It basically is there for everybody to bring buyers and sellers together to actually ensure that these products and these services are open to everyone. It's become clear to us through conversations there's a paradox in terms of intelligence over common sense. No business has every single skill set and discipline at the top level. So actually working together and creating collaboration has to be the key. Because if you look at the great organisations now, they are actually sharing knowledge and that is the only way that we're going to speed the development of nanotechnology. One of the main advantages of being here is that we build up relationships with these people that if we weren't on site uh, wouldn't necessarily happen. And just the simple thing of being able to go and visit them in their own office or they can pop in and see us on a very casual basis um, leads, to, leads to new business without a doubt. I've worked in many business environments and by far this is the most collaborative one. Indeed, it is an environment whereby many business sectors are available to, to help each other out. So if it were a professional firm of accountants, a professional firm of recruitment consultants, uh, an IT company, a marketing company, they're all on site and at hand to have that one-to-one -one personal conversation to actually detail exactly what your company needs and requires. Nanotechnology covers a number of subjects, but ultimately it covers the entire range of sciences. So whether it's life science, medical science in relation to diagnostics, through to engineering and computers, it really is across the board. We're here really to support any organisation and ultimately reach the wider world. The actual science in the 21st century is going to be more about how do we tackle these global, these global issues. And, and I believe what the Nano Foundation are trying to do, you know, they are laying that foundation. And, and I'm sure that within the 12 months time, 18 months time, you know, the sort of Nano Foundation will have proved what science can do to really tackle these problems. And I believe you know, that they could do it. It's fantastic to have the World Nano Foundation at Discovery Park and for us to be a part of, of that collaboration, transferring information and bringing all of the sectors together from the finance industry, the funding industry and then also all of the different science sectors and support sectors. There's, there's three real sort of golden pillars of getting what is good IP out there commercialised and in the market. Because the first thing you do is going to have to get some finance. And the things they will look at are, first of all, is it something that people want to buy? Because there's no point making something if no one wants to buy it and there's no market. Secondly, how good is the team you've got around you? You all might be great scientists, but do you have the commercial knowledge, the marketing knowledge to take it to the next level? And finally, have you got the IP bottom down so that nobody else can take it off you? Because without that, you're not going to get the investment which allows you to take it to the next stage of commercialisation. We recently had our launch and we're getting support from all over the world, from Asia, Japan, China, America, as well as the UK and Europe. We've been amazed at the amount of support we've had from both academia and industry. We've had fantastic time listening to some real thought leadership. What I like about this is bringing academia and also the fact that commerce comes together. I love the fact that it's international from the start and putting R&D into this part of Kent I think is absolutely vital. So far the day's gone very, very well, very interesting and um, certainly a lot to talk about that we will be discussing with the Foundation as we move forward as a company. I've acted actually as a bit of a conduit, if you like, 
between businesses and funders and uh, translators and exporters. And it's been an excellent day for that. And I think people have got a huge amount of value from coming. The bridge across the world is here. We've just got to get more people involved. The big wow for me is to have someone iconic um, like Dr. Anita Gohl actually talking about real-time advancements that will clearly change the world. It is just outstanding and it's really made the day for me. Some of the first apps we've begun with for this platform are on the global health infectious diseases. These are diseases that affect millions to hundreds of millions to potentially billions of people every year and and large global pandemics that have the potential to spin out of control and wipe out a fraction of the world's population in a short amount of time, if not rapidly contained. So those are some of the first apps we built on the machine. We're working with the FDA to fast track the one for Ebola. It's a point of care viral load. I'll mention something about that. And again, we're working with an ecosystem of collaborators, early adopters, pharmaceutical companies, where we can build personalized apps for precision medicine, uh, nutrition companies to do personalized applications for personalized nutrition. Uh, so there's a whole range of things, water companies and even uh, ag and, and clean energy companies for applications. When finding partners, whether it's investors finding the right science or scientists finding the right investors, it's important that everybody gets what they want out of it because ultimately they need to be going for the same path and the same vision. Education is so important because at the end of the day, it's not what you achieve sometimes, it's actually what you learn. I think the problem with young people these days is they're too clued up on their mobiles and going out and having fun, which is important, but they need to realise the reality and meet people like Dr Anita and be places like this to talk to important scientists and they can show them a pathway to science and say this is important. Within the next two, three years, although we're a membership organisation, we aim to be self funding and the additional revenues that we, we generate will go back into our community to actually develop uh, and get these great sciences out into the marketplace and the wider world.